Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and we have our good friend Roddy Meyer here with us. And those of you may remember the video me and my wife and Matt DeVader did with him back, oh gosh, Roddy, what's that been? At least a year ago, right? At least a year, yeah. Wow. It has been a long time. And of course, you know, I was on the chopping block because we were doing some recording at EMP Shield, and it took me forever to get to that. But uh, we won't get into all the reasons behind that. There were some very <laughs> unusual issues that were happening in the background that we still are not able to discuss. But uh, anyway, Rowdy, it is such uh, an awesome opportunity to get to speak with you again. You are a wealth of knowledge, as always. Uh, you live completely off grid. I mean, I envy what you have done at your place there. Uh, can you share a little bit again about what you've done at your property there, uh, not far from the plant? Yeah, it's actually, yeah, not far at all. Um, so for me, you know, it was never really about, okay, I want to go off grid necessarily. It was really for me was about, I'm going to take control of my own life. I'm not going to be dependent on the master, right? I don't want to have to ask permission for things. Um, and so I just built me an off grid place and and it's not like what most people would think, you know, I don't live in a little cabin in the woods. I live in a 5,000 square foot home that, that um, you know, we get our power from solar and, um, you know, we get our water from three different sources and um, we have a septic system for our sewer. But um, if, you know, if you'd have told me six years ago that I would live with no mortgage, no car payments, no credit card debt, no electric bill, no water bill, no sewer bill, I'd be pretty cool, pretty happy with that, you know? So um, I, I would never go back Yes, and, and I am. I do love the debt-free idea myself. Uh, I know our place in Sunbright, we don't owe anything on that. And so, now I did inherit my father's house down in Florida. Unfortunately, he put a bunch of dump trucks on that house, so I'm paying the payments for that. But uh, hopefully, I eventually will get to liquidate that and get rid of that debt. So, But otherwise, I do like uh, living debt-free as well. And um, and I'm still I've not installed my own solar panel system as of yet, but I know that when we were looking at yours mm -hmm. and I, I'm thinking about how that um, Mr. Keegan, the president of EMP show, when we were talking with him, I asked him this one question because, you know. I think sometimes people think, gosh, you know, when you're doing EMP shield, you know, you're trying to sell all these different products. Why can't we just hook one on the house, be yeah. done with it? It protects yeah. everything. Yeah. And Mr. Keegan really helped us to understand that. Like in the case of the ham radio, well, you got the yeah. antenna and you're not thinking about the lightning strike that might That's destroy right. it. And, and, and speaking, I, I kind of want you to kind of talk about these things, uh, Rowdy, but yeah. also too, because we've got a lot, I mean, very unusual weather that is happening right mm -hmm. now. I know from the people that I know that uh, I've been hearing this was coming for a long time, that more and more as we get closer um, to, uh, as it was told to me, a binary system, the, the, the worse the weather patterns would get, storms, earthquakes, volcanoes, tornadoes, et cetera. And we're seeing the strangest storms ever in history. Uh, yeah. And there have been more people that have had uh, successful protection from EMP Shield on that. And this, by the way, this is not an infomercial. I want to make sure I make that clear, guys. It's just that I appreciate Roddy's uh, understanding on a lot of these issues. But at the same time, you know, I do want to talk about this a little bit because I think yeah. it's important that we know. Yeah. Yeah, so let's start back at the beginning of your question. So why so many units? Well, at the end of the day, what everybody has to understand is that all of those lines that are out there are gigantic antennas. And whether that's your phone line, your coax cable, whether that's a, you know, a line coming in from your router, right? Or in your particular case, you gave the example of a ham radio antenna. So all of those sources um, of wire that come into a house are a potential antenna. And so if you think about it like this, so you're you're protecting at your breaker box, which is what most people do with a with an EMP shield or any type of surge suppression. You're protecting there. Well, what that's protecting is your AC line. That's protecting, you know, your 240 volt AC line that's coming in to your house, to your 200 amps traditional, your 200 amp service. That's protected. That's fine. But it isn't offering you any sort of protection on a coax cable. 
or the other lines that are coming in. You know, I'll tell you something interesting. We have had some issues come up lately in lightning storms where the um, EMP shield protected the entire house except the garage door opener. And we're like, what? Why would it not protect the garage door opener? Well, what we've learned is they have that little wire that hangs out, right? So that your remote control works. And in that surge of electricity, that electricity, that, that electricity can go through that little antenna and zap that box. And I can't protect it without protecting that little antenna. If that makes sense. Something you know, so that simple. does make sense. Yeah. So, but, you know, real quick, I'll, I'll mention this too. This lady wrote me the other day and I know she's going to get to see this video. And so I do stand corrected. Uh, the, the lady that wrote, she said, uh, at first I thought she was saying that, okay, my elect electricity went out at the house. Uh, how do I get a refund on, on the EMP shield because it didn't keep my electricity on? <laughs> but that was my mistake. I misunderstood what she was saying. She actually was saying, uh, I guess she needed to get another EMP shield because undoubtedly there was a lightning strike when the power went out at the house and the EMP shield did its job. She was saying that the light on the EMP shield yes. was no longer working. So I'm assuming that she needs to get a new one because the, 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 the machine has done its job. Can you kind of explain a little bit about how that works? Yeah, so when we're talking about lightning, and guys, I'll tell anybody that's watching this, this program, and I, I tell all my customers this, I wouldn't buy an EMP shield for an EMP. I would buy one for lightning because it's the most probable um, outcome as far as a, you know, a type of disturbance. We have case study after case study after case study of that device doing its job in reference to lightning. So, but here's the thing that people have to understand is that it's very different than an EMP. So a lightning bolt could be a billion volts of electricity. Bam, just like that. So the, the EMP shield is designed to sacrifice itself in that case. So it's gonna stop it, but it's also gonna sacrifice itself. All you gotta do is pick up the phone, call the company, explain to them what happened, they'll get you another one. It's not, it's not a big deal. So because it's so much voltage, that's why it does it. When, if you look at like the E1, the E2, or the E3 of an EMP storm, right? They are, it's all different, right? It's, it's different levels of power, different durations, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But they're nowhere near the billion volts of electricity that a lightning bolt can, can, you know, can do. This is why it sacrifices itself. Well, in that case, so Rowdy, does that mean the company is actually reimbursing them or do they need to purchase another unit? I would assume they would purchase another unit. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll pay, um, and I think the deductible is 50 bucks. They're going to pay a $50 deductible and we're going to send them a brand new unit. You got to be kidding me. That's incredible. No. Absolutely incredible. Because the thing is, is like, I, I knew that like if mine gets hit by anything like that, I know, like you said, it sacrifices itself. I just assume that I'm going to buy a new one. I mean, the company is really, that's, that's to me, that's really incredible. The company is willing to pay uh, for the replacement when you know that that's what it's doing. It's sacrificing its own life for the sake of your house and your appliances, et cetera, that are in there. So, yeah. Well, we do uh, it to protect the customer, and that's a good thing, but there's also another side effect um, that we do it for, which is we require the device back. So what we get to do is we get to analyze that device. We get to take that device apart after it's been struck with lightning, and we get to look at everything that happened. We get to put it on all of our testers, which in turn is part of our R&D department. We get to get better because yes. they get struck with lightning. And I'm not I'm not saying it's great people get struck with lightning. Nobody understand me. All I'm right, saying is right. we get to get better as a company as we continue to develop the next level and the next level and the next level of surge suppression. Well, let me ask you this. I know that that you've got a lot of friends in some very interesting places and things like that. Can you elaborate on anything that you may have heard about the different types of weather patterns that we may be facing in the near future? Yeah, you know, it's so interesting about that is it's it's kind of a little bit all over the map. People aren't, um, it's not like the, I'm hearing one concise message, you know, um, but what I think what everybody universally agrees with is that our storms are going to get worse, they're going to get more powerful, and they're going to get more frequent. Um, I've heard a lot of different examples of why that is, um, you know, from weather manipulation, which I'm telling you guys is a hundred percent true. All that is true. Do, it's a hundred percent true. It's not even close to being a conspiracy theory anymore. There's actually whole websites now um, uh, that have been developed so that you can monitor what they're doing as far as in the, um, in the atmosphere. And some of it is, 
you know, things like cloud seeding and, you know, different things, but it's an absolute fact it's being manipulated. I don't know if that's the reason, you know, some people say it's because of this, you know, the cycles of weather that go on and we're just going into that cycle where they're going to be better. I don't know. But I can tell you this, that it's absolutely changing here where I live. You know, it is not uncommon now at all for us to get 100 mile an hour straight line winds. It's not even heard of 10 years ago. You know, know, speaking of that, Rowdy, I was down in Florida where my dad's mine was at. And uh, I I got up the, the next morning. A lot of the siding on the house is just underneath the pinning is all. It's a brick house. So, but it's laying all over the yard. And I'm like, wow. I wonder how that happened, right? I knew there was a storm that night, but I didn't really think that much of it. I'm driving out. There's one highway that goes straight north. And as I'm going along, there's one power pole after another just snapped in half laying on the ground. Boom, 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 boom. And I thought, good night. You're talking about a tornado that just knows how to go in a straight line. And then I I got further and further and further and more and more poles. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's not a tornado. Tornado is not going to be that consistent to follow the road and just take out the light poles. Then I looked it up on the news and sure enough, we'd had almost 150 mile an hour straight winds from a storm. And, you know, because I mean, these poles normally normally even under hurricanes don't snap. Uh, But straight line winds, that's a different, different altogether situation. Uh, And then they're talking about mega canes that are going to be coming and from what i understand that has a lot to do with the sun's output and of mm-hmm. course that's being affected by other forces that's causing the sun to react the way it's doing uh so any other ideas on these types of weather phenomena well i mean i think there's i think what we as a as you know a, a citizens can do and it was just we have to be prepared for them and you know we we do it here on my farm and you know i built my house to, to withstand those types of pressures you know, I built everything we build, we overbuild, you know, if the code says we need a 35 pound snow load, we're building to an 85 pound snow load, you know, and just trying to, to make sure that, you know, we're there for it. I think at the end of the day, I think weather's being absolutely manipulated and, and maybe it's for good reasons. Maybe it's for nefarious reasons. I mean, I'll let, I, I'm not going to testify to someone's intent, but um, it's absolutely happening every single day. The storms are getting worse. They are getting more frequent. Um, I found it interesting, the hurricane that's brewing right now down in uh, the Gulf of Mexico, or that's headed that way, it's not a hurricane yet, they're projecting that maybe it will be a hurricane, but how quick it developed. You know, typically you would see them, if you remember 10 years ago, you would see the storm come off the whole, you know, of Africa, which is where they come from, right? And they yeah. Get off there and slowly build over time, eventually end up in the Gulf of Mexico. But, but now I thought this storm was interesting because it didn't even start developing until it was, you know, over the, you know, Cuba and you know, the Dominican Republic and those, and now all of a sudden it's gaining in storms because um, the highest temperatures ever recorded in the ocean are sitting out there. You know, speaking of the highest temperatures, I saw something that was just a phenomena for me here in Tennessee. And I live kind of the northern part of Tennessee. And I'm coming out of the driveway about a week or so ago. Here we are. It was still uh, mid-July, I guess, when I was coming out. And uh, and I'm seeing my driveway loaded with leaves that are that have that have turned brown and fallen off of a tree off the tree. Uh, now I live on 26 acres, so I got a lot of trees, you know. But then I looked up and I started seeing several different species of trees. Their leaves were turning yellow. They're getting ready to fall. And I'm like, this time of year, yep. there's no way. Uh, and I thought the only way that that would happen, the sap's got to go be going back down to the root of the trees. So I got curious. Uh, my daughter's riding along with me. And I said to her, I said, look on the Internet and see if trees due to preservations under extreme heat, if their sap will go down into the root of the trees. And sure enough, that's exactly what she discovered online. Uh, so you mentioned the record water temperatures. And then, and that was actually consistent, Roddy, from where I lived going until I got all the way to the southern end of Tennessee. I didn't, you know, didn't stop changing like that until you got further south. The further south you got, the less you started seeing that. But up in northern Tennessee, a lot of trees were already changing colors. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder what's causing the pressures. Um, You know, I can tell you something that alarmed me in reference to all of this, you know, what we're talking about. You know, I have three water sources that feed my house. So I have a two and a half acre pond, a hundred foot deep well, and 10,000 gallons of rainwater storage. And they all come into my house 
and then depending on what valve we turn dictates what water we use right pretty simple but when I was building that that system, um, I sent all of my water sources out for testing, and, and I'm very lucky that not very far from me, you know, 100 miles from me is Kansas State University, which is a big ag school that this is what they're known for is this type of thing. Right. And so I sent all my all my samples out to have everything tested, and interestingly enough, my rainwater tested positive for fluoride. <laughs> so. <laughs> You'll have to tell me what things in nature or what's up there in the air that would, you know, naturally cause my rainwater to test positive for fluoride. And that was low, low, low amounts. It wasn't a, an amount that they would consider unsafe. But nonetheless, it still tested positive for fluoride. Could it be that the way then the seeding process of clouds that they're, they've got some kind of fluoride in that? That's my wow. bet. That is. That's my bet. Wow. That is unreal. Every direction you go, you know, you, you, you know, and like yourself, I have the rainwater uh, collection. I have the well as well. Uh, I intend on building a lake eventually and behind the house there. Uh, I just haven't done it as yet. I do know how to do all that, uh, luckily. So, and I have the equipment to be able to do it with. That's the other advantage I have, but uh, I got to get that to Tennessee. It's all in Florida right now. But uh uh, go on, let's look now, Roddy, too. One thing that really came up interesting to me, like you said, lightning is going to be the most probable cause for yes, people to need the EMP shield yep. protection. Um, now that we see that EMP will even, for a $50 deductible, will replace it, that's absolutely amazing. Yep. Uh, I forget the sister's name that wrote me, so you'll probably be looking at this, sis. So, hey, yep. now you know what to do. Contact the company, and for 50 bucks, they're going to send you guys a brand new one. That is awesome. Yep. Um, so here's the, here's the question, though. or I want to present this to you and then get your thoughts on this as well. According to what Hezbollah has put out recently, they had told Israel that um, if you launch a mass scale attack against us, we have the technology and we will use an EMP strike yep. over the state of Israel yep. and cripple your country. Yep. I believe very much they have that capability. Um, now, this is I'm going to kind of couple this also with weather weapons at the same time. Because there was a very, and I won't call the guy's name, but a very prominent Israeli uh, evangelist that speaks prominently here in America, he had made the comment about, he's looking more at Ezekiel's prophecy, and he was talking about, you know, how that all the countries have come against Israel. And he said, technically, he said, we will get defeated. He said, but God is going to step in for us, and then he's going to obliterate them with all these weather weapons. Uh, he says, but we don't have that type of technology. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I just got about a year ago from Israeli intelligence, some of the technology Israel has, including the, the ability to make massive earthquakes, tidal waves and everything else. So yeah, they do have that technology. The, but the big issue though, that I looked at though, in this case here, Rowdy, it was the fact that Hezbollah has the ability to do an EMP strike. Uh, what we would consider to be a rogue um, terrorist organization, as they're often referred to, you know, but they have that capability. How much more than if they have that capability, have the enemies of the United States that are not too far from our borders, or at least have the capabilities of getting closer to our borders, that real possibility of an EMP strike we are now facing. I remember at the at there at, at the headquarters there, you guys have this article about the dangers of an EMP strike from China. Yeah. But I don't think it's limited to China any longer. No, in fact, I would argue that anything China, Russia, um, North Korea, um, any of those, anything those countries have, Hezbollah and Hamas also have. Ar Iran, it's it's all one and the same. Lines are being drawn in the sand, in my opinion. And, you know, whether you want to call it BRICS versus the West, or whatever you want to, you know, the Axis versus the Allies or however you want to, you know, draw a line in the sand, those those lines have been drawn. And I promise you, I know this with 100 percent certainty, anything China and Russia has, Hezbollah and Hamas have as well. I'll guarantee you this. Which brings us to another uh, thought. And, and I say this in respects to being proactive at protecting your home. Uh, those rowdy, those people that listen to me, they know I'm not a salesman. I've never promoted products. Uh, 
I think one time I did promote uh, Steve Pigeon when he did the Ed Sefer Bible. I promoted that for a little uh, for a little while at one time. Um, you know, you guys were the second time I ever promoted a product in in 16 years of being on the air. And uh, I just never wanted to be in the rat race, but I believed in what you did so passionately that I wanted people to be protected. Uh, then the third one I got into, which was more recently, was a company called LifeWave because of stimulating stem cells. Mm -hmm. And we have just seen phenomenal results with our listeners, everything from one friend of mine that I know that had gotten cancer, didn't have a thyroid, and his thyroid grew back. His doctor confirming it, you know, just it's crazy things. But other than that, I don't like promoting things. But I realize that we are facing real threats. They may be sooner than later. Uh, the storms are a real threat in itself. But when you look at some of the people that are covering our border and Clearly, whether they be Chinese soldiers that are coming across, they're not calling them soldiers, but they're all very well rehearsed. They know what to say to be able to get the entry into the border. We have Arabic speaking people. And I'm, and I'm looking at this, Rowdy, and I'm sitting there saying to myself, where are the Mexicans? Mm -hmm. You know, seriously. And I don't mean that in any derogatory sense towards the, the, the Mexican people in Mexico that have tried to come into this country for freedom, you know, but where are they? The people that really, if you wanted to have compassion on somebody trying to get to freedom, it should be them. 100%. But they have all been suppressed, held back. Nobody's allowing them to come in. But boy, we sure got a bunch of other people coming in of every nationality you can think of under the sun, including the Middle East. Yeah. And how easy would it be for that, if they're there, what I'm thinking of, if they're there on the southern side of the border, and we've already seen weapons uh, we've actually we did a, did a, a a a documentary, not a documentary, but a film on it one day, about how that in in Mexico the drug cartel already have weapons that the Ukrainians had that were given to the Ukrainians uh, from all the weapons we've supplied there. So I can only imagine what these other nations that are there have at their disposal that could be launched against our country. There. Are I don't can't think of another time where there have been so many things that could potentially spark off at one time and you know and it's it, it's everywhere but guys I'm going to tell you something the threat of losing the power grid to a high altitude EMP strike is there that's a real threat but they don't have to do that because at the end of the day the truth is all they've got to do is turn up the voltage in the transformer and they'll blow it out too which they are fully capable of doing I can tell you with 100% certainty our transformers have kill switches in them. I know it's been confirmed that our transformers have kill switches in them, as does the router in your home, as does a lot of other things. So there's a lot of ways to attack the grid with power surges. It's not just a hemp. Now, that, that could happen too, but why waste a, a you know, nuclear bomb at 300 miles you know, above Kansas when you can send an email? I mean, the fact of the matter is they have it. They have handheld EMP devices. You could absolutely EMP one single building. You know, those that type wow. of technology exists out there today. And I'm going to tell you, and everybody knows this. Anybody who's, who's paying attention at all knows this, that the next generation of warfare is electronic warfare, right? It won't be fought in trenches and it won't be fought with tanks and, and that kind of stuff. It'll be, you know, fought with hacks. It'll be, you know, fought with, you know, ransomwares. It'll be fought with those types of things to include turning up all the transformers and killing, knocking the grid out. God, our grid is so fragile. It takes the littlest thing to have power knocked out for a million people in Houston because they get a thunderstorm. It's not it's not that big a, a thing anymore because, again, the grid is so old. The powers that be have decided they would rather take money and send it to all these other places and do all these other projects instead of taking care of the needs right here at home. And our grid is old. It needs replaced. It's been needing replaced for a long, long time, and they're not doing anything about it. That is unbelievable, crazy, insane, everything you could possibly think of all at the same time. And when you say that, Rowdy, you know, I remember getting a, 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 an intelligent uh, uh, information one day about Russia having malware uh, in our electric grid. And it was so advanced, we had no way to mitigate what yep. they had put in there. Yeah. Uh, so we're basically, as, as it was sold to me, uh, now maybe by now they've already figured out how to get it out of there by now, but if they figured out how to get it out, they've got a new one coming in. Yeah. But uh, 
that's just how vulnerable we are. Like you said, just uh, for them, uh, an email, one email. And, and believe me, I know I'm on computer number six, I think, laptop here in the last three years because of the constant attacks on my computer. And then once I uh, inadvertently open some email that, that's able to get a hold of this computer, then the next thing you know, it just crashes constantly. Boom, 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 boom. And I have to throw it out and get another one. So, you know, and if they can do that to your computer, they can do it, like you said, to the grid and everything else. It's it's insane to what we're what we're going through. Yeah, you know, I can, I'm going to quote um, a um, high level person in Department of Homeland Security who was quoted as saying to me, I was sitting there listening to him, was quoted to me and he said, nothing that's made in China is safe for consumption. And he was not talking about food. I can, that was not any part of the conversation where we're talking about bananas or potatoes. Wow. No. Wow. Think about that, right? Really <laughs> right. think about that. Yeah, right. and, and here's, the, here's the whole thing, and, I, and this has come up many times before with people that I know, you know, and that is like, for example, we're flying our, our jets, regardless of which ones they are practically, the chips in them are normally made in China, you know, they could yes. easily take control of what you've got, flip it around, send it back and cause you to attack yourself. You know, they've found on some computer boards, they have found small antennas buried underneath a solder bump. They can spy on anybody, anywhere, anytime they so desire. That's a fact. Wow. Talking yeah. about needing to go off the grid. <laughs> that's, See, that's, why, that's why I did it. That's why I don't allow smart technology into my home. You won't find it anywhere in, in my home. I have the internet here so that I can, you know, keep up my YouTube channel and keep up the things that we're doing, you know, at some of the companies that I own and things like that. But I'm not, I am not connecting my solar system to the internet. I am not doing those things. My pumps are not going to be dependent upon some smart type of technology because as the guy said, nothing made in China is safe for consumption. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. All right, Roddy, yeah. I want to. Uh, I'm going to have you share with us uh, because I do know you. You have an incredible group of people there, uh, preppers, etc. I'm going to have you share with uh, everybody about uh, the group that you have there. Just for the, the knowledge of everybody that's listening, Roddy Meyer. He is the vice president of EMP Shield. Uh, incredible, incredible guy. Uh, we had a wonderful time with him and his family uh, when we went up there. Can't wait to do it again someday soon. Uh, Share with uh, with everyone though a little bit about yourself as far as the outside the world of EMP Shield and what you do yeah. because I'm sure they'd like to be a part of that. Yes, yeah, so, so I own um, several companies. I, you know, I also am one of the owners of the company called Grid Down, which you know builds solar systems and you know some just some other things that we mess with. But my real passion is community, and it's really what I spend the greatest amount of time on. Um, you know, when I get done with this video with you here. I'm going to study up for the county's commissioners meeting tomorrow because I'm going to go in there and throw a fit about some new zoning regulations. But um, a couple years ago, five years ago, I started with the idea of let's go build a town. And I didn't mean like a geographical town. I didn't mean a post office and a saloon and a whatever. You know, what I meant was how do I get enough people together that we can actually begin to make a dent? How can we create those parallel uh, societies? You know, how can we create that parallel economy? How can we do some of that stuff for ourselves so we're less dependent on the beast? And my goal is to starve the beast. And so it started out small. It was me and one other farm that were here. And as time wore on, we added more and added more. And I started advertising on my YouTube channel, Life Done Free. I advertise land when it comes up for sale, things like that. And we have just grown and grown and grown and grown and grown. And, um, you know, within about a 150 mile radius, there's a couple thousand of us within, you know, um, 75 mile radius. There's 80 farms right around me and we get together all the time. And we just got together last weekend and about, you know, I don't know how many people are there. 30 of us were there. And, stood a whole building, a community building, so that we had a place to have weddings and services and things like that. And we, uh, you know, do bulk buys on, uh, you know, railroad, uh, rail cars full of lumber, for example, or, you know, just whatever, solar panels. We got a semi-load of solar panels the other day, about 565 watt solar panels for $104 a piece, but I had to buy a semi-load. So I bought a whole semi-load and then <laughs> this pallet went to this farm, this pallet went to this farm, this pallet went to this farm. And uh, so it's really my passion. And we're, we're making so much dent and we've created our medical system. Um, we are super active in local politics. They hate us. They know when we're coming. You know, we speak at the commissioner's meetings. We hold them accountable to what they say. 
we make sure that no rule is passed that does not um, have some type of backing from legislation, you know, a executive order or a, a you know, any of those kinds of things, those are requests. Those are not laws. And right. so we make sure we distinguish in the public around here the difference between, um, you know, them saying, well, we would like you to do this versus what's an actual law. And um, so it's been a lot of fun and we're going to keep doing it. And, you know, I'm hoping to continue to grow out here. And because uh, every time we grow, we get a little bit stronger. And as we get stronger, yeah. we carry a big enough, bigger and bigger stick. And then pretty quick, we can start really impacting um, things on a bigger basis. But that's really my passion. That's what I spend the most of my time on. What tell tell everybody the YouTube channel you have the name sure. of it and I'm going to post that also in the description so people can okay. find you sure. and in any way they could also reach out to you as well. Yeah, you bet. So my YouTube channel is Life Done Free. I'm um, just free man, right? Um, yep. And uh, but I'm on Facebook under Life Done Free, um, and so you can find me there too. But um, you, that's what the YouTube channel is, and then also I own a social media platform called Freesteading.com which um, allows people to come together and yoke up, which is what we call it in their state. And we try to help other people build communities. Because here's the thing, if we could build these decentralized communities, these decentralized education systems, decentralized uh, monetary systems, if we could build them in every single state, we wouldn't have to fight nobody. We could just ignore them. <laughs> and what a great yeah. position we would be in. Right? Yes, yes. And so that, that's ultimately our goal. So yeah, so go to Life Done Free. My email address is in there. If you're interested, reach out and contact me and we'll chat. That'll work. Thank you so much, Roddy, for, for being on here with us. Listen, if you happen to want to get an EMP shield for your home, uh, your home, your car, your RV, your solar panel, whatever it might be, because all you got to do is go to empshield.com. Uh, they have them for everything you can think of, even little tiny ones there for motorcycles now, things like that. Uh, you can order one, use the coupon code INL50. And uh, the company will give you a $50 discount as well as it blesses the work that we do here. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Rowdy, for being with me today. I so appreciate it. Happy to anytime. I'll always be available for you. You got it. Take care. Thank yes, you guys for listening.